All right, so welcome to the company study session. It's on day two of the week three of the SGS phase. And, you know, let's have a conversation about how it's been going. Like, what improvements did you realize in company in week two? And actually give us a realistic experience in the applications you are doing. Are you actually going through the company study process? Are you taking that time or are you just you know, how, how are you approaching it specifically? And also, are you doing like all the parts of the company study or are you focusing on some of them? Uh, the, the, in the survey that we recently launched, we had someone saying that they felt like looking up on the uh, organizational structure is not that important. Well, we will have that conversation later, but you know, tell us what are you focusing on before submitting your application specifically? Yeah, we, we are very few here for now, so we can just go around the table and uh, share how it's been going with anyone who wants to go first. Yeah, Ahmed. Uh, okay. Uh, for me, I'm trying uh, to do the the main six, uh, what I call it, but uh, uh, the main six point about the company. But uh, sometimes I feel like I'm focused on two or three of them: uh, the culture, uh, their uh, current. Uh, uh, trends and also their uh, products. So I'm not sure if uh, this is considered as a bad uh, or or it's, uh, this is really the, the main important part. Uh, actually, also I'm uh, uh, copy paste. I didn't uh, rephrase what I I found uh, as my own words. So is this? Uh, a bad way to do it, or it's good for the sake of time? Uh, so you have been focusing on three areas, which are, uh, can you repeat them again? Three areas you're focusing on? Uh, the current trends and uh, service and products, and also the culture. OK, yeah. Completely understandable since it's just on the application phase only. Uh, you know, it, in cases where the current trends shows someone, uh, you know, talks about some some department or talks about what the CEO has been doing, I think you can find a way to relate that in your cover letter. I mean, if you are doing so, unless you're just submitting the generated cover letters from Leap immediately as they looks. But I feel like on the application stage, there are no worries just to focus on those three. So, yeah, no worries really. How about you, Sheila? Um, hello. Sorry, I'm um, high. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Uh, so, um, with the company study, uh, my experience has been uh, I'm finding myself okay. The last time we spoke, my problem was with future predictions, and um, I realized like with future predictions, it's very like when I went deep into it, it's very easy for you to get biased information about future predictions. So yeah, I take a lot of time on that, but I stopped like focusing on that a lot because yeah, in most like in most uh, interview questions, I didn't see like interview questions where they ask about the future predictions. So I like I stopped being concentrating a lot on that. Then another thing I realized is I find myself um, extremely interested in the background of a company which takes a lot of my time because like I'm experienced, I'm interested in the history of the company. But what I've realized is a bit more important to know about is about the company culture, the company culture and their values. 
um, when I look, when I go through Glassdoor and I look at the reviews of people who have worked in that company before and what they say about the CEO and the reviews that are actually almost consistent, it makes me um, get a feel of how the job and the work environment is and it helps me understand like whether this company is a good fit for me or not. Then, um, yeah, lastly, oh yeah, also what, what was mentioned, um, the structure of the company, I don't know why I didn't find it like really important because like there are companies where you can't be able to like know the board members and all that, all that like the board members and everything, but like the companies whereby you can get the board members. So in most companies I was doing, I was just getting the CEOs this and the CTOs and yeah, and the CFOs as well. And, but knowing the number of people who work in the departments that exist, that has been really important on the company structure part of it. But yeah, that's my experience so far. Okay, very good approach. Uh, you know, I like that one, especially focusing on the background because with with those information, then you know how, you, you know what you should actually be relating with, especially in the cover letter. And actually, by the way, to talking about cover letters, are you submitting the cover letters that are specifically generated by LEAP? Or are you taking time to go to read through them and see if there are any amendments you can make? That's a general question. Okay, Sheila. Um, okay, I've, I've, I won't speak from experience because like the first cover letter I was able to generate, I wasn't able to view. But according to what Hillary, there was a time Hillary was having issues whereby he said like, he looked at the CV and the cover letters that were being generated from leads and he discovered there was there was some information that was a bit inconsistent. So I think I took it upon myself to check out all the cover letters and everything they produced just to go read through in case there's something we missed or maybe there's a grammatical error or something, I adjust. So yeah, mine is from Hillary's experience. Okay, that's very great to hear. Uh, are the rest of others also doing the same? You can give my thumbs up or thumb down. Uh, Johannes, if you can open your mic, you are using yours how? Sorry, the question was, are you using a cover letter from LIP or your slide? Come again. Was the question, are you using cover letter from LIP or are you using mine? The question was, are you, oh, actually you can even tell us, you know, are you using cover letters from LIP? Are you using the one that you created yourself? Or are you taking the leap ones and edit them in case there are any necessary edits that needs to be made? So uh, the first time the cover letter and uh, the resume was generated for me, uh, the information wasn't correct. Uh, it was actually others, uh, another person's information. So I wasn't able to use the cover letter from leap. And the way I wrote, I will, I will write my cover letter is, I will check the job and always I have some kind of structure, but I will always write cover letter based on the job. Okay. All right, all right. Thanks for sharing. Okay, I'll be, we can go ahead again. Anyone to share is their company study experience? Guandera. Andrea, do you want to go? Uh, yes, please. Yes, sir. How is how has been uh, the the um, let me call it 
you know, how have you been using company study experience in your job application so far? Are you doing all the steps? Are you choosing some that are necessary? Are you, how are you approaching it basically? Uh, I, uh, I usually, I, I do all the steps, but I, I mainly focus on, uh, um, on, uh, the culture and the products that the, the, the product they're working on, like mainly the cost, like what, what people, what people say about the company and the products they, they do. But at the same time, I, uh, there, there are sites I, I landed on when I was working on, on it last time that gives you all the basic basic information like uh, the the ceo the company the location the market value all that stuff but it doesn't necessarily give you culture and, and like the products are really really working on so i deep dive into those to understand the company and what people what people say about the company and also i also look at um i check out their linkedin to look at uh the the employees they have and i see if they have employees from all over the world that also kind of motivates me to have a look at like to apply to the company but if i look at a company and i see that most of the people are from within the country i i tend to believe that uh, they because uh i was talking to someone recently and they and uh, they shared with me that their their company their jobs you apply for and you realize that let me say it will say, let me say, it will say Italy remote, but they they want people who are in Italy, but are, who stay in Italy, but they're going to be remote. It doesn't show hybrid, but it shows that. But when you, when you, when you read through, you realize that they want people who are like within Italy, but they're remote. And then there are roles that are, they're open. So when I look at the company and I see people from all over the world, I, I be like, okay, this guy is actually remote. They're willing to to onboard someone who is not necessarily within their same country. So, I apply. I I, I save those jobs because I still I'm still trying to learn how to write a, a really good cover letter for each job. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's what I focus on mainly. Okay, that's very super. Uh, actually, that's a good realization. Like going through the people section and seeing if they have different nationalities that tells you that they they are actually open to even hire from outside the location they are you know focusing on and uh, that reminded me uh, what was I about to say Okay, yeah, that reminded me that unfortunately, LinkedIn have the options, like when the companies are putting applications out and they want to select their, 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 their focus location, the location they want to focus on, they do not have like, uh, uh, they do not have like, um, how do we call it, like remote Nigeria, remote, uh, remote Uganda, remote Kenya, you will find that the only African country that appears is mainly an Arab country or uh, or South Africa. An Arab country or South Africa. So, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't know why LinkedIn doesn't allow them to put like remote with, within a certain location because to the rest of the location like Rwanda, Kigali, Uganda, Kenya, it's just they assume that the roles won't be remote. So the location will just appear as Kigali, Rwanda or Kampala, Uganda. So yeah, but when the, when the employer wants to communicate that their role is remote, then they have to choose another location which is available on the options they have to select from LinkedIn. So that's why knowing that it gives you the insight that, that you should look into the people section and if you see different nationalities, different locations, then you are able to tell that that company is actually uh, open to hire from other countries and then you can go ahead and submit your location, your, your application, you know. I feel like it's a, it's a good bet to do. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Martin. We can take the last person and then uh, we go into the challenge document. 
Bethlehem, good morning. We haven't heard from you in a long, a long time, Bethlehem. How about you, Joseph? Are you there? How about you, Temskin? Hi, uh, sorry, I didn't read the question. I didn't read. I'm just sharing about your company study experience. Uh, you know, when looking, it's in the window of job applications reality. Yeah, uh, so. I think I like the I I I, I get more uh, insights from the Y Combinator in the, the crunchy room. Yeah, that that was a good approach for me. So I usually to take I usually search for in in LinkedIn for the company, study about them, and watch their uh, website and check out on the uh, uh, crunch roll, uh, crunch wheel, yeah. so uh, yeah, more or less, I didn't, I didn't use another method or uh, another method to the company study, but mostly uh, using LLMs is, is effective for me so instead of uh, going through uh, two or three uh, like linkedin in their website to search what they do to understand it so just to sum up the their work so i use the lens and explore their uh, company structure on their linkedin on the using country base I can see the market trend and what they have. And, uh, I recently, I recently uh, come across with one uh, job. It, it was from Leap, and it is called the company Andy. Maybe some of you run run into it. So it was interesting. Uh, their 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 business model. It is uh, a search engine. It's basically Google, but with LLMs. It, it is interesting. Uh, I first started with Sam Alton and uh, uh, Lex Friedman podcast. It is interesting. Uh, they are the LLM using Google as the LLM. So it is, and, uh, the questions for the for your search uh, returned. Uh, the, the retirement is not no, not just links, but effective information that you need. So that's the big company uh, business model. So that was interesting, and I saw them on Crunchybase, and they are somehow on top of the leading AI uh, startups in, in US currently. That was interesting, and I have applied. Yeah. So I use basically the normal recommended meters. Uh, that's how I uh, use them. Yet so that's what I have. Okay. All right. That's great. Thanks for sharing as well, Tamskin. Um. Okay. I think we can pause the sharing there, and then for the challenge this week, this is the last company study challenges we're going to be doing. We believe that after week three, we should have known, uh, you know, all the. Uh, we already understand the importance of this, but getting familiar on how you can get those information faster, so that you can focus more on the next job application you should be doing. You know, yeah. 
Uh, that's it. So for this week challenge, it looks like the week two one, you are going to be basing the challenge on the uh, on your three chosen jobs, uh, sorry, companies you want to focus on and then go through the steps like we did in week one and week two and then submit at the end of the day. So like we are used to starting today, tomorrow and then Thursday. So that's it. Nothing changed. And this is uh, the last one and we hope that uh, you you also get the, to realize the improvement you have that you have made since week one, week two, and then week three. So that is it. Um, one more thing I can say is that we are going to extend the deadline for interview prep videos submission so that everyone can submit. We only received um, we only received eighteen submissions and we should be receiving 28 submissions. So to the 10 people who haven't submitted, look forward to your submission because that's not only just to get the grades, it's just a good, a good experience and getting your confidence up just in case, you know, you go into your first interview very recently, very soon, actually. You know, fingers crossed for that. Um, yeah. That is it. So if you haven't submitted, we are going to communicate it, but the next deadline is on Friday. So you will have your time to put together uh, what you need, especially to those who had like phone issues or camera issues getting like quality ones. So you have until Friday for you to do the work again and then submit. That's it. All right, I guess so. Uh, we are closing it here. So thanks everyone for joining. Have a great day moving forward.